Hey everyone, it's Rod with Power Group. Welcome back in the pursuit of wealth, your home for MJ Stocks, crypto assets, and interviews. Today is Saturday, July 8th. Hope you're having a great weekend. And in this video, got a different style of video for you today. You're gonna do some MJ rapid fire news and updates for the last week or so. I've been floating around a new idea for videos. And this is something that I came up with. Again, gonna just go through some news that transpired over the last week or so in the sector. Let me know in the comments if you like this this format of video and if you would like to see more of this in the future. And if you'd like to see it around 10 minutes, 15 minutes, I'll try to keep it no longer than 15 minutes, but try to keep it around 10 minutes for a sweet spot. But let me know what you would like to see in terms of length, if five minutes or 10 minutes is your, your favorite. But before we get to it, make sure to smash the like, help support me in the channel. It doesn't cost you anything. If you're new, you can subscribe, take the bell, you'll be notified on any future videos or whenever I go live. Also, I did an interview with Morgan Fox. He's the normal political director. Normal is a nonprofit organization that lobbies U.S. government. And I'm going to go through some articles here that they posted. And hopefully I can get uh, Morgan back on for another interview because it's been a while. That interview was back 10 months ago. Wow, time flies. But here's some updates. This was a great article here from Normal. Major changes to MJ law take effect around the U.S. So in Maryland, MJ possession, personal cultivation, and retail sales are now legal. In Connecticut, adults may now cultivate MJ at home for personal use. In Virginia and in uh, Virginia and Nevada, multiple medical MJ program improvements were implemented. We also have New Hampshire. Out-of-state patients are now able to access state-licensed medical dispensaries. In California and Louisiana, efforts to expunge thousands of prior MJ offenses are underway. And in Maine, legislation limiting the ability for those on probation to be drug tested for MJ has become law. And earlier this year, Delaware and Minnesota legalized adult use MJ and Kentucky legalized medical MJ. And we couldn't have made this incredible progress without your support. So thank you uh, on behalf of Normal, they say. And they say you can ship in to legalize America. I've actually donated to Normal before. Like I said, they're a nonprofit. So if you so choose, you can do so as well. It will definitely help the cause. And uh, yeah, further along, MJ legalization around the globe, specifically though in the U.S. here, uh, as Normal is based in the U.S., there are still critical efforts underway around the country that need support. In Ohio, MJ legalization bill is currently awaiting a committee hearing and subsequent vote. In North Carolina, medical MJ legalization legislation is gaining momentum. And in California, Connecticut, Maine, and New Jersey, legislatures are working to establish social venues where legal MJ may be consumed privately by patients and of age adults. And in California, last but not least, California and Pennsylvania bills expanding access to medical MJ program are awaiting legislative action. So we'll move on here. Safe Banking Act heads back to Capitol Hill this week in MJ Investing. So the Senate is expected to review the Safe Banking Act when it returns from the 4th of July recess. I did a video on this that we could uh, expect it in the next two to three weeks where we see a potential vote and realistically, realistically could be any week now. So again, now that 4th of July Independence Day is over, hope you had a great 4th of July and Independence Day. And for those in Canada, a great uh, Canada Day to my fellow Canadians. But now it's time to get back to business. So let's see if we can see it next week, potentially. RFK Jr. also wants to decriminalize pot and psychedelics. I actually did a video on that. Uh, so if you haven't seen that video, you can check out that dedicated video. Also, Germany's first MJ bill to reach the cabinet this summer. So they're expecting it to be next month. And then they published their first draft of law for recreational MJ as well. And then today, there was an article, or sorry, from yesterday, July 7th, the Germany releases more MJ legalization details. So as we go through here, uh, the public has learned in April that there would be a legal age of 18 years old. But again, nothing's been finalized yet. Uh, but there was some new proposals here. Adults minimum 19 years of age are allowed to grow up to three MJ plants, regardless if they're male or female. Unless you work for MJ Social Club, you can not have more than 25 grams of MJ at home. So again, these are all just tentative at the moment, but again, we should see it here at some point next month. Hopefully uh, we should get an update and a draft of that recreational MJ bill. Also article here from MJ Moment, MJ banking bill signed into law by Missouri governor. So Missouri MJ businesses will have fewer obstacles. So again, we're starting to see more state, uh, more states kind of, you know, do their own thing. And then some states like New Jersey are working on uh, on fixing the 280E tax code from the IRS, right? Uh, so again, these are it's kind of I seen an, an article there the other day too that a lot of the the federal prohibition against MJ is really co creating confusion because of all these individual state laws and uh, and legislative changes as well. So it'd be nice once the federal government can get on board with the with the states as well, and uh, we can get a little bit more broader reform here. 
because it is definitely confusing, especially imagine being an operator, right? Like there's so much regulatory red tape uh, to maneuver, right? Also, May MJ sales were sluggish. So MJ sales decreased 0.5% uh, sequentially in May after decreasing 3.6% in April, according to MJ data analytics firm BDSA. So that was in May. And then Illinois MJ sales advanced in June. They were up a bit sequentially to 136.4 million, a gain of 2.7%, despite one less day than in May. And the gain was 7.6% from one year ago. Also, MJ Moment reports Maryland MJ sales topped $10 million during opening weekend of adult use market. Pretty exciting. And we know Cureleaf is a big operator there. Trueleaf commemorates Maryland recreational launch with first online order. And then we also had some news regarding the NBA. They're allowing players to smoke weed. Uh, so that law goes, in, that, that rule goes into effect. A new contract between the NBA and the NBA Players Association that allows players to use MJ went into effect over the weekend. And that was published on July 3rd. So that's exciting as well. As we know, the NBA has been very, very, uh, you know, innovative. But they've been at the forefront with regards to uh, easing rules and restrictions with regards to MJ with their players and with the league. Unpaid MJ regulatory fees continue to climb in Canada. So unpaid regulatory fees owned by MJ companies to, can to uh, Canada's federal government jumped more than 200% from the year earlier, almost $4 million Canadian dollars at the end of March. The overdue fees have grown every year since 2019 as MJ businesses, businesses licensed by the federal government struggle under the weight of taxes, fees, and intensely competitive market and poor business decisions. And we know that there's over a hundred, I can't remember what the... Uh, exact number was, but there was over 200 million in unpaid federal excise taxes to the Canadian government. So not only is the Canadian government the biggest beneficiary to recreational MJ with all the taxation, they're also the biggest lender basically and creditor now to the MJ space as well. And we, there's over a thousand LPs in Canada, licensed producers. That's not sustainable. Uh, there's been companies that are starting to go uh, insolvent and bankrupt, and that'll only continue in my opinion. And uh, retail, the retail locations are very uh, saturated as well. So I'm not just expecting it with regards to producers. We're going to see it uh, with regards to the retail locations and mom and pop shops specifically. And I've got an article on fire and flower here that I want to update everybody on here in just a moment. But Cureleaf International subsidiary to acquire Clever Leaves, which gives them EU GMP certified processing facility in Portugal. And they also celebrated launch of adult use sales in Groton, Connecticut dispensary. Also, Organigram completed the share consolidation. So it was a four to one basis, reverse split. And a lot of people were shocked at the price and uh, they woke up. I did a video on this a while ago. Uh, it was at least over a week ago, I think. Uh, just kind of preparing everybody to to be aware of that whenever you wake up uh, on July 7th, it was uh, the, uh, the shares actually split. So that's what happened there. If you're wondering why we had such a percentage growth, it wasn't actually a uh, share price appreciation. It was just a reverse split. So the shares get cut and the share price, the, the shares go down and the share price goes up, right? Versus the other traditional stock split. Whereas Tesla, when it did a stock split, it was just a regular stock split. So the amount of shares go up and the price goes down, right? So it's just the opposite. Also, uh, Canopy Growth congratulates Terrasen on its Toronto Stock Exchange listing. I just did a video on this yesterday. A first MSO to hit the Toronto Stock Exchange, so a huge milestone for the company. And speaking of canopy growth, uh, actually, before we get to that, Terrasen buying Maryland MJ Dispensary for eight million. So that's another smart move on their part. As we know, adult use sales just went to, into effect. But speaking of canopy, they were hit with a zero dollar price target by analyst. I did a video on this, and I also did um, a section on the, on the bankruptcy potential and insolvency bankruptcy. Uh, so again, I think this is just overblown. Uh, but check out that video. Uh, for more information on that and then in other news canopy growth to participate in opal groups family office and private wealth management forum so that will be july 10th to july 12th moving on decibel launches general admission edibles and tilray sweetwater brewing launches gummies beer a new juicy revolution so can't wait to try that out uh, very uh, very uh impressed with all of their brands. And I tried a couple of their brands and beers uh, whenever I was in the US, specifically in Florida. And uh, it was delicious. Let me know what you think of it. Judge rejects counter proposal for MJ firm fire and flower sale process. So this is what I was talking about fire and flower, one of the biggest uh, recreate, one of the biggest um, retail locations and uh, companies here in Canada, uh, over 800 employees, I think at one point. And uh, but 
very close to a thousand employees basically going insolvent. So a counter proposal by the syndicate of parties that opposed a proposed stocking horse agreement. Stocking horse bid just means a uh, a way to maximize the value of the assets before they go to auction. So that agreement between MJ Retailer, Fire and Flower, and its largest shareholder, affiliate, convenience store operator, Alimentation Couch. Uh, Kushtard was rejected by Ontario Judge. So we should see some updates uh, with regards to that, but definitely uh, a little bit of a fork in the road there. Uh, hasn't been going as smoothly as we would have uh, expected. But uh, definitely uh, feel for anybody who was affected by that, their jobs and whatnot. Also, Canadian MJ producer Kronos Group reviewing sale options. I did a video on this one as well, and they talked about potentially uh, Cureleaf being one of the interested parties. So I did a video on that specifically, you can check that out. And also another change at the top, MJ MSO MedMen taps Alan Dutch as CEO. And I think that's the fifth CEO for MedMen now. And then also Amit Pandey as chief financial officer. So we'll see what they can do to right the ship uh, there. But uh, I do hold MedMen in my portfolio long term. And we know that Tilray has some convertible debt um, of theirs and could potentially swoop in and acquire them once federally permissible. And then also Mike Tyson's Tyson 2.0 brand is out now in Maine on the champ's birthday. That was back from June 30th. And we know that uh, Hexo had the uh, the rights for distribution here in Canada. And now Hexo is part of the Tilray family. So Tilray essentially will be handling that distribution and, uh, and roll out here in Canada. But again, let me know what you think of this new format kept it uh, just over 10 minutes. Let me know what you'd like to see in terms of time as well. I uh, always love hearing from you. Let me know what you think of this news and we'll continue the conversation in the comments below. But hope you have a great rest of your weekend. It's Rob with Power Group. Thanks again for joining us in the Pursuit of Wealth and we'll see you in the next video.